The urinary system is basically a waste removal system. It's made up of two parts. The upper urinary system includes the kidneys, renal pelvis and urethras. Kidneys essentially filter your blood of excess fluid and impurities. That's what becomes urine. You may be able to live without a lot of things, but your kidneys aren't one of them. The urethras are tubes that carry the urine downwards from the kidneys to the bladder. There's a sort of valve along the way that prevents urine from backing up to the kidneys. The kidneys don't want it and could be seriously damaged if the urine were to make its way back. That's the upper system. The lower urinary system includes the bladder, its muscles, the urethra and a sphincter muscle. The bladder both stores and empties urine. Its walls are made up of several interwoven muscle layers. These muscles are relaxed as your bladder is filling, but flex and contract when you empty your bladder. The bladder walls have receptors that keep track of how full it's getting. At about 200 milliliters, the receptors start signaling to the brain that something will have to be done soon. At 400 milliliters, the signals are pretty much non-stop. We've really got to go. The adult male urethra is somewhere between 20 and 28 centimeters long. It's the tube between the bladder and the exit. Right below the bladder, just here, where the urethra starts, is an internal sphincter muscle. Below the sphincter is the prostate gland, and below that, there is an external sphincter. The sphincter above the prostate gland is a kind of gatekeeper. The muscle squeezes the urethra shut as the bladder fills and relaxes when it's time to empty. That's part of why you can or can't hold your water, so to speak. The other is the difference in pressure between the urethra and the bladder. When it's high in the urethra and low in the bladder, it's easy to hold back. When you empty your bladder, the reverse happens. Pressure goes up in the bladder and lowers in the urethra. And that's the quick tour of the urinary system. But the head, for the most part, is still in charge. In a very complicated interaction, your bladder sends signals that it's filling up along the spinal cord to a part of the brain. That part then sends signals to another part of the brain, which you feel is the need to pee. When everything's working properly, you can then decide when to empty your bladder. Once you give the signal, your central nervous system sends the command that contracts the bladder and causes the sphincter muscles to relax, lowering the pressure in the urethra as it opens. Now, your bladder then empties completely. And when you're done, everything goes back to the way it was. Which brings us to the big question, why isn't the system working properly? Well, it depends on your condition. For many who see IC, the problem is an overactive bladder, which is a muscle, remember, contracting involuntarily. It means that you could have the urge to pee 15 times a day, but never actually empty the bladder completely any of those times. Or that the bladder muscle itself is too weak to ever empty totally. Officially, this can be a type of incontinence because the contractions can also result in a sudden, unstoppable emptying. The same thing can happen to men who, as a result of their injury or condition, can't feel their bladder fill or its signals for emptying. The other reason the urinary system might not be working properly is retention. Some or all parts of the urinary system aren't working properly, so it simply can't go through the automatic steps for emptying the bladder completely. With retention, the bladder may not be emptying completely for a number of reasons. It could be damage to the urethra, an enlarged prostate, or the inability to relax the sphincter muscle. It could also be that the bladder muscle is weakened due to injury or for some other reason, such as the result of a medical treatment. With retention, you might be able to pee, but don't empty completely, leading to an overfull bladder. Some men experience both incontinence and retention, especially if they have a nervous system condition such as MS, spina bifida, or a spinal cord injury. One of the problems from a medical perspective is that there will be residual urine in the bladder, which could lead to infections and leakage. And if the bladder never empties properly, or if there is increased pressure in the bladder, urine could back up into the kidneys, which is a very serious problem. 
But whether you have a milder or more severe form of incontinence or retention, the good news is CIC can definitely be part of your solution. And a really easy and effective one at that.